And we're going then into questions on um, lifestyle, other things that people can do to help their joints and social prescribing because, well, we're overjoyed that that's starting to happen more and more and people are coming to our classes who would have thought oh I'm too old or I've got too many health conditions to exercise and actually at long last people are realizing just how beneficial it is uh, and in terms of socializing for their mental health too but what exactly is social prescribing? <laughs> it's a really good question because when it first came out, I think all of us were scratching our heads. Mm. And I don't know whether you've ever read the NHS England webpage on social prescribing. I refreshed my memory of it this morning. It sounded like double Dutch to me. <laughs> um, so I looked at, um, I work in, in York as, as a GP, and I looked at the York social prescribing webpage, which very succinctly said, for areas of healthcare which do not require a medical or surgical intervention but need input that's what social prescribing is about and I thought yeah I, I can understand that mm -hmm. so what do I mean by that if I say you came to me and say you were struggling with your arthritis and you said I'm really frustrated I'm, I'm trying to do all the right things but I'm not getting very far. What am I missing? And we did an overall holistic assessment. We might say, um, certainly if it was me, um, in my case, if you were to look at me, you might say, Alistair, you need to lose some weight. <laughs> so weight loss, we know if you can lose weight, then that, as long as you're, um, we're talking about you being clinically obese or clinically overweight, then that tends to be beneficial. Mm. And in going back to the draft guidelines, they're now saying that 10% weight loss or more is better than 5%. Mm. But they also go, it's darn hard. Yes. And it's really hard if you're pain, if you're in pain, and then mm. I'm telling you to get up and exercise more and lose weight. It's mm -hmm. not good. Yeah. So maybe referring them to um, a third party organization, such as Move It or Lose It, or to a local York City Council or equivalent weight loss team yeah. helps, but it's part of a package of care that you discuss and share decision making. Yeah. So that would be one. The second would be what would be if you needed adaptions around your home. Mm. Um, you might be depressed, you might be lonely. Mm. We know that with a lot of chronic pain, and a lot of chronic um, diseases, such as osteoarthritis, that can be a bit a big issue. So yeah. what about some form of informal group where you can socialise more and you yeah. can interact more? Or you have a peer group where you're all trying to achieve the same thing. All of these have been shown to work. So that's what social prescribing is. Mm -hmm. um, remind me of the rest of the question because I've forgotten it what is social prescribing and I think I think how would you get your GP to actually get you to talk to a link worker I know they are training up to 4,000 over time but um, what's the best thing do you talk to your GP first or ask the receptionist I would talk to your GP first but you can always ask the receptionist receptionists are, are very underused resources um, and I often we're now saying that they're rather than just being a receptionist they're a signposter so they can, might be able yes. to signpost yeah. or they might say I'm not quite sure but if you look on the board here or if you look on our website mm -hmm. so increasingly we're putting things on our websites um, but also the councils are putting things on the website because social prescribing is quite integrated with public health aspects yeah. so a quick google of social prescribing and your your city um, will come up often with a social prescribing link site. Yeah. And it may say you need to see your GP to refer. It may say that um, you can refer yourself. So smoking cessation is often mm. able to be self-referred. Um, so I'm lucky I'm in a large inner city practice. Um, we have 45, 46,000 patients. So we have our own social uh, prescribing link. 
but they work in harmony with all the other social prescribing uh, links in, in York. When I've worked as a locum for practices, particularly going out to the smaller practices, not just in cities, but also in the countryside, then there's a variation in the amount of social prescribing. Yeah. So perversely, sometimes the small practices in a rural setting don't have an official sort of social prescribing, but have been doing it for years anyway. Mm. And that's because there's sort of intertwined networks. But again, it's knowing who to talk to. So if you're struggling, talk to your GP. Um, but between your GP and if you're getting nowhere with GP, contact your um, your council if they've got a social prescribing web uh, page and an office. You should yeah. be able to get a hold of someone. That's fantastic. And I think we are seeing more and more of this now where people are coming in. And, and we always say with our classes, the first one's free. Come and give it a try uh, to get over that barrier of sometimes feeling, oh, this, this might be full of young, fit people. Um, you know, it's not like when you go to the gym. Uh, this is very much about having a, a, a social time as well as exercising. Yeah. 